If you're stuck in a certain ELO bracket, then this video is for you, as we'll be breaking down the top 5 champions to escape each ELO for Season 12. But before we get into it, be sure to check out Skillcapped if you want to truly get better at League of Legends. We're the only service that offers a money back guarantee if you don't climb at least 5 divisions while actively using our service. We do this because our service really does work, and if it doesn't work for you, you shouldn't pay. Learn more at the end of this video, or click the link in the description below. Down in the depths of Iron, the best top laner you can play is Alawi. Ilawi is a champ who thrives in those chaotic clown fiesta situations where people are just running right at her. Ilawi loves when enemies group up in melee range so she can unleash her ultimate and spawn multiple tentacles for massive AoE damage, and this happens a ton in Iron. As you reach the higher ranks, it's not too difficult for players to kite Ilawi around and abuse her short range, but in Iron, players don't have those same kind of mechanics. Although Belveth is a strong jungle pick for every elo bracket, she's the most broken in iron. Fact is, games in iron last the longest, and Belveth is a champion who excels the longer games last. Playing these scaling junglers are going to be way more optimal for the lower ranks than trying to make something like Lee Sin work. Lee has a 43% win rate in iron, and Belveth is at 55%, so there's quite a disparity there. The best mid laner for iron is Heimerdinger. Heimer works great for low elo for the same reasons as Alawi. Nobody will respect how strong Heimer is when you run right at him as players don't have the mechanics to kite around and abuse Heimer's shorter range in iron. You'll find yourself picking up so many 1v2 double kills with this champ, it's insane. Misfortune is the queen of lower elo, and although we have her as the number one ADC for iron, you can play her in any elo bracket and find success. It comes down to the fact Misfortune doesn't rely as heavily on kiting or auto attacking to be useful. There are team fights where you won't even auto a single time and be 10 times more useful than the enemy ADC due to her ultimate. The number one support for Iron is Swain. If you can land Swain E on a consistent basis, he's got the best kill power for any support in Iron. Enemy ADC will constantly misposition, giving you free angles to land E. Playing supports who rely less on their ADC is very important for the lower ranks, and Swain can do it all by himself, especially at 6 when he's got ult. When a champion has a 55% win rate, it's safe to say they're a little strong, and that's the case with Yorick in bronze. Yorick is just as good for iron and silver as well, but we wanted to give you guys a couple of options. Nobody knows how to deal with split pushers in bronze, and Yorick has the easiest to execute, yet most devastating split for any top laner. 1v2 power is also amazing, so if the enemy team decides to send multiple members, you can outplay it with ease. Going off our theme of scaling junglers for the lower ranks, I'm sure many of you can guess who our pick is for bronze. Master Yi was just recently buffed for 12.13, which makes him even better and is a no-brainer pickup if you want to climb low elo. Downsides to Yi are that he can be easily kited and doesn't have the best early game, but those are way less punishable in bronze where players can't kite and games last for ages. As long as Yi can reach his core items, he's going to be a massive threat, and the likelihood of that happening every game is very high in bronze. Our mid lane pick for bronze is a champion everyone should play if they want to escape low elo fast. Annie is the perfect champion to escape bronze with as she takes little mechanical skill which allows you to learn the game super fast. Let's face it, if you're in bronze there are so many macro aspects of the game you still need to learn and Annie will allow you to learn them at a much quicker pace. Many of you probably aren't going to want to hear this, but if you want to climb low elo from bot lane, playing a mage is more optimal than most ADCs. Our bot lane pick for bronze is Vagar, as his kit works perfectly for games that will be slower, allowing him more time to scale. Stack that AP by farming with Q, zone off choke points with E before objective spawn, and press R on high priority targets to see your elo skyrocket with Vagar. Brand is the king of bronze if you're looking to climb from support. The chaotic team fights are where Brand thrives, and you're going to run into your fair share of them in bronze. When the enemy team groups up as 5 in a choke point, pressing R and watching their health bars melt is extremely easy to do and very rewarding. Much like our Swain pick for iron, Brand is a support who's way less reliant on his ADC to be useful, as he can easily 100-0 the enemy by himself with a full combo. Moving on to silver, our top lane pick is going to be Garen. Very little mechanical skill required to play Garen, he becomes really difficult to kill, but can still output a ton of damage. Champions that can soak a lot of damage, but still have the ability to effortlessly annihilate enemy squishies are amazing for the lower ranks. 
Shivana is the best jungler for Silver as she's another champ that scales like a monster and can abuse poor objective control. Shivana loves stacking dragons as her passive becomes stronger the more dragons she takes so you can just focus on hard farming, taking dragon whenever it's up and become a beast in the mid game. Our mid lane pick for Silver is Malzahar as he requires a little more skill than Annie or Heimer but is still relatively easy which makes him great for Silver. You're not going to see as many QSS purchases in Silver which gives Mal's ult way more value. Yasuo and Yone are the two most played champs in Silver by a long shot so you can shut them down really well in the mid game. Other than his fortune, Ash is another really good traditional ADC for low elo and she's our pick for silver. Sticking to MF is completely fine, but once you reach silver, transitioning to someone slightly more mechanically intensive like Ash is an option. The W spam is great to exert lane dominance, and although it's a skill shot, it's pretty easy to land. Landing R can be more difficult, which is why we have MF prioritized if you're completely new to the game, but once you get the hang of Ash ult, making plays on your own feels really nice. Our support recommendation for Silver is Zyra, another amazing support that can take matters into her own hands and not have to worry about her monkey ADC. We have Zyra for Silver and Bran for Bronze because Zyra is a little more difficult to pilot, but she's still a top 3 low elo support regardless. Like Bran, Zyra has crazy good teamfight power and can dominate in extended fights, which happens a ton in Silver. If you're in Gold, one of the best top laners you can play is Mordekaiser. Mord isn't super mechanically demanding, but he's a bit more difficult than someone like Garen, so picking him up in gold when you have a general understanding of the game is great. Stat-wise, Mord performs very well into picks like Garen and Gangplank, who are the most played top laners in gold, so he's a very consistent pick. Picking a jungler with a little more early game impact but can still teamfight and scale well is great for gold, so our pick is Amumu. Especially after his recent buffs, Amumu is an excellent jungler for gold. Good gank threat but not entirely reliant on winning early game, can find picks and teamfight better than most junglers, and has a hybrid build that makes him really tanky yet can still output great damage. Swain is a superior mid laner for gold right now as he's one of those champs who fits right in the middle mechanically but can still face roll later on and be useful. Stat wise, Swain wins at insane rates against Ari and Yasuo who are the two most played mid laners in gold. Swain performs really well into shorter range champs that need to dive onto him and we see a ton of those in the lower ranks. Seraphine Bot is a pick or ban champ regardless of elo right now, but gold is where we think she's the strongest. For iron or bronze, she's a little too mechanical to be the number one, and for the higher ranks, we feel more skilled supports can be of higher impact, so she fits right in the middle. Playing Seraphine Bot is easy elo right now as you get to scale for free and become this utility monster who can still output consistent damage. Our support recommendation for Gold is going to be Sona. Gold is a really great elo to play Sona in because she's not going to be punished for her early game just yet and can rely more on her carries to utilize her utility than in Silver and below. Games in Gold tend to drag out and if Sona can reach a couple of items, her team fight power is ridiculous. You see a ton of Bruiser and Fighter champs spammed in Gold as well like Yone, Yasuo, Darius, Garen, and Kane. so playing Sona with them is easy wins. Moving up to Platinum, this is where you can start venturing into champions with a little more skill expression. Darius isn't the most difficult top laner by any means, but isn't as face roll as someone like Garen. Compared to the top lane champions mentioned previously, Darius does require more knowledge on how to play different points in the game, which takes more skill than just AFK splitting on Yorick. Once you're plat, you should have a decent understanding of the game, which makes Darius an amazing pickup. If you're a Platinum jungler, then adding Diana to your champion pool is what we'd advise. We really like Diana for Plat because it's no longer an elo where you can just run right at enemies with Master Yi and not expect them to react, but players still won't respect the long range pick power Diana has. The new tanky build has made Diana more forgiving as well, allowing you to make more mistakes which if you're in Plat will still occur quite often. Victor is an incredible mid laner for the majority of ranks but even better for Plat. Since Victor has his mechanical nuances, you don't want to pick him up in gold or below, but in diamond and above, his early game can be exploited more heavily. This is why we feel he's perfect for Plat as it's a nice middle ground. Plat is where looking into ADCs who rely a little more on auto attacking is a good idea. Jin is an excellent ADC for Plat because he requires more skill than the likes of MF or Ash, but still has his fair share of utility, which doesn't make him 100% reliant on kiting perfectly to be useful. A champ we could have featured for multiple elos is Renata Glask as her power level is incredibly high. Renata is one of those supports who isn't entirely reliant on her team to be successful, but is much better off with competent teammates, so Plat is where she starts to become super OP. 
Making our way into Diamond, this is where you can start abusing champions who require more coordination or general game knowledge. And with that said, Shen is our top lane pick. Shen has the ability to smash lane, but can also contribute with cross the map alt plays, so there are many things you have to keep track of on the champ. Constantly watching your minimap, having to think about who you should be ulting in what situations, and knowing when to split or when to group are things you need to be able to process to play Shen optimally, and Diamond is where we feel players can begin to achieve this. Our jungle pick for Diamond is going to be Nunu, and although the champ doesn't require a ton of skill, he's best when paired with players who can capitalize on what his kit provides. In the lower ranks, players aren't even going to react to ganks half the time, so playing a spam ganker like Nunu isn't as optimal as a hard farmer. Once you reach Diamond though and play with people who will react to pings and follow up on ganks, he can be the most devastating jungler. Anivia is pretty strong for most elos right now, but works best in Diamond where players can begin to pilot her well. Anivia is definitely more difficult than the mid laners we recommended for the ranks below, as her skill shot reliance and shorter range requires good spacing and lots of practice to nail down. Diamond is the best elo to pick up Twitch as he can rely more on his support to be useful and more enchanters are spammed in high elo. Twitch is also an ADC who has nothing but damage to provide for his team so you need to be competent mechanically to play him at a good level. A good Twitch with an enchanter by his side is a nightmare for the enemy team to deal with so if you're a diamond ADC definitely look into him. Tarek is such a broken support for Diamond and above right now. Landing E consistently isn't an easy task and popping ult at the correct time is also difficult to get used to. You need capable teammates who can follow up on your plays or else Tarek is pretty useless so Diamond is where he can really thrive. For Masters and above, Trindamir takes home our slot for top lane. Yorick is the king of low elo split push while Trindamir is the most optimal for the higher ranks. Yorick suffers in high elo because he just gets kited around, but Trindamir has so much mobility in his kit that it's very difficult even for high elo players to deal with him. Rengar is a jungler who if you can play to his limits and exploit the enemy jungler for every mistake, there's no one better for masters and above. Rengar players are winning over 53% of the time in masters, but only 46% of the time in silver, so just based on stats, it really shows the skill required to make Rengar work. The number one mid laner for masters and above if played to their limits is Kiana. The near guaranteed one shot and ridiculous teamfight potential will make it feel like there's no counterplay when against a mastered Kiana. It all comes down to being able to pilot Kiana at the highest level possible which is why we have her for masters plus and not for the lower ranks. Not only do you need to be mechanically sound yourself to play Kalista, your support also needs to know what to do when you ult them which makes Kalista amazing for masters and above. It's also important your support plays something that synergizes well with Kalista to get the most out of her and you can coordinate that much better in high elo. When paired with an aggro support who knows their matchups, Kalista can solo carry extremely hard. There are a few different supports we could have went with for Masters and above, but we landed on Bard. In previous seasons, Thresh would have taken the spot, but his overall power level is a lot lower right now. Bard is in a great spot for solo queue and in Masters where players understand roam timers and can hit skill shots consistently, he can be the most OP support. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little more about skill cap. So, we offer a 5 division rank up guarantee and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well in fact that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium league guides on the internet. We add over 20 videos a week with over 1600 guides curated into over 100 courses no one can compare. We've also sent challenger players into ELO Hell 714 times and counting where they commentate how to carry live. They also respond to all questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month if you are serious about improving. So there you have it guys, the best champions for each ELO in Season 12. Thanks so much for watching, good luck in solo queue, and we will catch you in the next one.